Prince and repeated it again. So this time, Video gonna stand here. Flux, but he's way too far forward. Permafrost there stuns him up. Why change anything if it's gonna work a second time? <laughs> and crazy said that again. Early game gold lead for Vitality. Uh, through that top side. Oh, he's oh. too far forward to the turret. <laughs> Exit kick. My God, this was a little bit harder than I thought it would be. And welcome back to the LDC. As Vitality comes back here, and I just completely lost it. I'm sorry, guys. It felt the players are having fun. Okay, so we can have fun as well here. Having a lot of fun, apparently. But yeah, I mean, look. Let's be real. Great game from Vitality to bring yeah. it back into this. Bring us to 1-1. Um, I think it was it was a bit of a mixed bag, though. Although they did end up winning in the long run, there was definitely some nice early game plays from SK, which mm -hmm. helped them get a lead. But then it was Vitality having, well, a stronger mid game, which we kind of come to expect with this team bringing it back. I mean, they, they need both teams need to refine and like, clean their gameplay, I feel like, coming into this third game. But Broxa, we set up Niski and Isma working together in the early game. And yet again, this is what SK is doing. Yeah, it feels like the synergy between V2 and his jungler just isn't there. Like, it's the exact same thing happening two games in a row. His wave is in a difficult spot, it's frozen right in front of Niski's turret. Um, eventually, it starts pushing back, but before it does, V2 gets ganked. He doesn't respect Isma's timing, and even though he put the ward, it was really e easy for Isma to avoid it and kill him now. His mm -hmm. flash is still not up. Niski goes for the play, he doesn't have counterplay. Huli tries to arrive, but again, the volleyball is nowhere to be found. And I think this is just the key problem Vitality is having throughout the early game. The mid-jungle synergy is non-existent, and they have to work on that if next game is to be easier. Yeah, and the uh, fact that this is what made their success also, I feel, in the regular season, the fact that every player knew what they had to do. It feels like they lost, uh, I, I don't know, the essence of the team here. We'll see what they can make happen in, in game three. But uh, I, I want to talk about the mid-game, because for me, this is where everything exploded, yet again. Yeah, I think there was definitely Vitality like playing well, and I think credit to, again, like, the way that you get the Hillisang trying to cover for mm -hmm. a lot of these plays works out really, really well, where he's in a position to try and help out. But I think there was also a couple of mistakes when it came to set up at objectives, like Doss missing some really key abilities when it came at times, even sending his AD carry into his death at some points, but also then just finding these quick plays. And mm -hmm. here, Hillisang, this was actually really cool. Like we were kind of scratching our heads back in the uh, green room saying, hey, look, what is the point of this silly? And it doesn't feel like you got the point of click CC that you really want yeah. for something like Zeri, but being able to speed up the Zaya on the mid wave, super valuable in the 1v1 against, well, 2v1, essentially against the, the enemy AD carry. Then as well, being able to speed up the Volley Bear into a lot of these plays to set up for these fights, enabling the Shockwave then to follow up. It worked out incredibly well. And I think Vitality just significantly better when it came to the setup, but this play was just oh miserable. God. This was full solo queue, man. This almost felt personal. Right? Like, Exa Cake walks over the plant, does is like, goodbye, my friend, <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> Sends him into his death. And actually, this was a really big turning point for Vitality because before this, it was a pretty close game. Now, after this point, whew, that's the point of no return, really. Yeah, I do feel like Dust is going to feel guilty uh, about this one. But I mean, you're only allowed to throw so many team fights, and yeah. by, uh, I feel like SK messed up a bit before that. What was the defining yeah. moment of the game, though? I mean, I agree with Proxy that that was kind of it, but I think coming back to Dust for a second, yeah. I don't want to see the Bard anymore. This is, no, we've no, seen no. it a couple of times now from, and it's just too inconsistent. Sometimes he has great ultimates, like we saw at the top inhibitor turret. Other times he completely whiffs. I think they need something a bit more consistent and Doss throwing his AD carry in didn't help out, but it did mean that the man on the screen behind us, Karzi, absolutely fantastic. He was stellar. The enabling of Hillisang was perfect for him. His positioning was great. And the amount of plays that he turned out in this game to pull Vitality back from the brink just says how good he is as a carry in early. And this is peak Carsey performance for me exactly. because when you look at the later stages of the game if you want to look at one carry on any team who's going to bring you the victory with his positioning and how he deals damage that's Carsey. Yeah it felt like in a game where Vitio was struggling and had to take more of a passive role yeah. Carsey and Photon just stepped up massively and completely destroyed SK in the mid and late game. Roxai I believe that there was a Baron yeah, we, we, need to, we, to we need to look to at a little about. something. Obviously, Vitality <laughs> did win the game, oh, but no. this was a real head scratcher. Now, Vitality is in full control of the game. What you may realize here is that both side lanes are being completely ignored. 
SK has great vision around the Baron, Isma is sitting on the other side of the wall, and literally nobody from Vitality at any point shows any interest in stopping Isma from getting into the pit. So he literally just walks in for free because Vitality decided to go full NA RAM and just act like side lanes don't exist, Vision Clang is overrated, and I think this is kind of unacceptable. I mean, sure you get away with this, sure you win the game, but man, come on, like I've seen solo yeah. queue players have better macro than this. But look, it's made the I game spicy it. though. This series has been real spicy. It is a like, banger. It is a thing. banger. Sometimes I want the clean League of Legends, all right? But we're eating good on the fast food today because there's is. been burger flips every yeah. single game. <laughs> it's actually been like fun. And I do think I agree with Broxton where it's like, hey, look, let's be real, this hasn't been the cleanest. But these have been a banger two games back to back. This is like fighting dirty to get this across the finish line. I mean, it's the beginning of playoffs, right? Like players are getting used to it, uh, giving the viewers uh, the run for their money here. But looking at looking Holy at this game, and yeah, gap. I, I want to say <laughs> yeah. we knew it, right? We knew that the Jace was going to be a huge win condition, and Karzi popping off, of course, in the late game did it for, for Vitality today. And I think as well, just to give a quick moment to him, Photon yeah. has been exceptional both games. Game one, the Rumble, getting some really key early plays. Game two as well, massive lead. Now he wasn't able to convert that particularly well. You can see Hillisang trying to play around him, but I think from an individual performer basis, Photon has really been stepping up. Well, we'll see if uh, Vitality has enough to close out the series or if SK will manage to pull this one back as we're going to toss two casters for game three. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome uh, back. We're, we're in on it. Um, we're in on it. We've learned what we, happened. We, uh, we know what is going so we're now, so we're now part of the Adrian's bachelor party. That's Adrian! Yeah, it's That's Adrian! Adrian. <laughs> yeah. He's getting married! <laughs> Congratulations to Adrian. Yeah, they're here celebrating. And uh, he is wearing the Teemo hat while all of his friends are wearing the mushrooms. So, uh, oh, yeah. great. Great outfit. I love the decor. My wasn't this excited. I didn't have mushroom hats, so uh, shout out to Adrian. It's a shout nice out to Adrian. To start off. Yeah, uh, he's he's coming a great day. We're getting into game three of Vitality versus SK. It's, uh, now it's guaranteed now to be gonna, a banger. We're going to take them off because yeah. they won't balance on their heads. Yeah. Cheers, Jess. <laughs> uh, but right, let's get straight into draft. Game three, SK move over to the blue side. Uh, Vitality on the reds. Let's see what adaptations we will find. What is going to be banned away? What will the priorities be? So far, we've been seeing uh, Rel and Varus consistently banned away from the side of Vitality. Meanwhile, how will SK approach their bans? The Rumble, oh, the Rumble and the Orion are going to be taken away from their side. Okay, so power picks that we've already seen throughout this series. Rel has been a constant here. Renata actually taken away as well. Suggesting it. <laughs> yeah. Early Nautilus from the side of Vitality. <laughs> he was struggling to <laughs> We are, woo, the words point. are, mm, this is speaking Welsh. Maybe I'll feel more comfortable there. Oh, um, so, Varus still available, Callista as well. Yep. Uh, the Azir has been a priority for SK along with the Zeri, but I don't know if Vitality consider them to be threats. It's SK that will actually ban the Varus themselves. So what first pick are they looking at here? Perhaps it is the Callista. Is this something that Vitality want to ban away or are they happy to leave it open? Things like the Vi are also up and available. They're not going to let it through. Yeah. So will the first pick be here for SK? Are they thinking about the Azir? Do they care about the Zeri first pick? We've seen Ze uh, <laughs> Senna yeah. fall off a cliff in terms of priority okay. in this series specifically. Whereas usually we'd see it be very high priority. The Maokai was banned in the previous game. Yep. And it looks like it's going to be locked in for Isma this time round. So big AOE CC, a lot of team fight potential from the side of SK. Question is, what are they going to pair it up with? These days, we don't really see the AP Maokai. We're seeing a lot of tank Maokai instead. So a lot of AP mid laners will still be ran when paired up alongside it. But remember, the Merc Treads gets a lot of value when you're playing against a... Uh, a Maokai, so yeah. AD mids can often still be very, very valuable. But I like that this hover came through. I mean, still, we're going to get the Sejuani from Daglas this time around. So, the champion that Isma's played two games in a row. But what is more interesting is looking at that Jace. Jace Maokai is such a great duo, regardless of what lane it is. I think it's what we'd call like a power duo. For sure. Uh, in League, kind of similar to Vi Ari in the sense of its presence it has in game. Let's see if Vitality take that away or if they get an AD carry nice and early for Kazi. Because remember, double AD carry already picked up here. They say no. We're happy to flex around and see what Kazi can do. The Jace instead taken away from someone I mean, like Irrelevant, where it was one of his most played in the regular season. I, I just love to see Photon more on carries. We've been seeing it so much more this year as a whole. And I think that he is really performing for his team. 
Swiffer with stern words towards his team right now, directing towards a clear game plan. Reminded that these are not pre-recorded drafts anymore, they are live in the best oh, of three stage. Got to mention. And we are, of course, on a new patch, as you can see at the bottom of our screen. But Zeri, for the third time in a row for Exa Kick, the Zyra is, of course, available for Vitality. Yep. Question is, will they want to go for it once again? What are they thinking about here, SK? Because the thing is, it depends on what your priorities are, and it looks like they're the same. So, <laughs> Zia is going to, once again, be the champion. Will we get an Ari? I don't love Ari here for Vitality. I think a Silas could be really good for VTO. Akali is something that you'd associate with him, but against a Maokai, it's like not fun. They're gonna lock in an early support, save mid for later. Uh, I do think that like Silas paired up with Sejuani, great, but also just into that comp, Silas versus Maokai, Silas versus Azia. Like there's a lot of great ultimates to Star steal. Boy. So uh, keep that out of the back of your mind. For now, we'll have to wait and see as the early Rakan comes through. That's trauma. <laughs> also, also, that's also Rakan on the other side, naturally. You don't want to give over Zaya Rakan. Uh, this time, Hill's saying they want piece of the puzzle, but... Oh, I mean, I haven't alluded to this. This Jace could go mid. Also true. Uh, of course, they're keeping the flexibility open. If um, they locked in a mid now, it would have... Uh, uh, made it easier for SK to actually get a counter and why do you... There's no need for you to reveal your hand, right? Wait yep. until you see that top laner, who it is, before you decide where you actually put that Jace. Sorry, I was just looking at the, the champ pools of these players and then I saw, I think, that the flag for Belgium and then that's the flag for Germany. Yes. I uh, just didn't realize yes, it. Yes, it is, yes. <laughs> on, on the side versus turned around. I don't know. Is this is a strange time to I, have that epiphany. I'm in Australia, <laughs> I don't really see many flags from Europe, and I'm like, hang on a minute, those flags look a bit mighty similar. Correct. I don't know if that's the hot but you were or not, but No, you were accurate. That's the yeah. crucial thing. You were correct so in everything that you said. So they just turned around, yes. yes. Okay. Well, if I'm the first one to notice that, I'm sorry. Kazi <laughs> locks in, though, at Kaiser. Now, talk about dive being built up in Vitality in the meantime. Yep. That's a lot of all-in potential is now for SK. Are they trying to set up further engage with themselves? The Camille support was banned from Hillisang last game. And it could be something that SK try to get over the line in this final game with a lot more lane presence. Oh, it is. But where is it going? Yeah, where is it going? Is this Camille top into Jace or is this Camille support? We don't have to make that guess because we're about to find out. The final pick, Quartel, is all we need to know. Unless they pick another obscure top support <laughs> flex pick. Like that. Well, I mean, it's not obscure. It just shows us that okay. that's going top. That's going top. In their final game, remember remember, we, we've seen it from Broken Blade, right? Yeah. And in that game, I said the two people who are playing it the most in solo queue are Broken Blade and Irrelevant. So Irrelevant's been spamming this a hell of a lot too. Top lane Rek'Sai is oppressive. Well, they've Ooh, been one twisted, twisted fate. Eight rounds of top down. lane? It must be, right? You said the Jace can go mid. It looks like it's going to be there. Uh, a lot of AD damage. Yeah. But... Unless Kaiser build exists. I mean, that's true. It's probably the, the, the AP Kaiser build, where there's a lot of poke, a lot of low cooldown on that W as well. I mean, this is actually like... Strong pick comp, side lane threat, a lot of 1-3-1, Vitality, a difficult to execute comp, all things considered. SK sticking to their guns. They are playing the more traditional front-to-back composition. Yep. Their engage is a little weaker than what it was before. Maokai ultimate is something that can be averted and managed with what Vitality have drafted for themselves. Rek'Sai, if you can find some nice flanks. I will say though that Camille can obviously create a lot of chaos when paired up with things like a Rek'Sai, just because of how easy they can get onto the back line. But Vitality have so much poke and SK are gonna have to be really proactive at stopping that poke before it becomes a problem. Especially if we see an early RFC come out from Photon. Like, this TF is going to cause some real problems. A lot of single target damage, a lot of pick potential, and a lot of side lane threat from the side of Vitality. Excited to see how they make this one work out for them. We're jumping into game three. The winner will remain in the upper bracket, while the loser will move down into the lower bracket to fight for their lives in the LEC Spring Playoffs. Last winter, as in the split just passed, it was Vitality knocking down SK. How's Revenge gonna look here? And is it possible for SK? The comps have been fun, the games have been fun, they've been bloody. And if you were here, say, on a Bachelor's Night, you'd be very excited that you've had such enthusiastic gameplay out of Vitality and SK. Excited top again. Excited to see it.
Now, in 14-6, you might look up like, oh, has Rek'Sai been changed a bit? Just quality of life changes to make the W unburrow, the Void Rush nicer to I use. I think it was 0.7 where the nerfs actually came through. Ah, then we don't have to worry, do we? No, nope, we don't. So, Rek'Sai top, again, tank. Might have Titanic in it, Sterix Gage. Was seen by BB as well as Solo Q is. Uh, this I, is smart. Minions Wait, they're pincering. Photon just used the gold card. Isma not out in time. Photon pays respect. The movement speed from the fleet footwork. Wow, what? With us today? Not it. Kind of challenging considering it is our profession. It is. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's Easter long weekend, Betty, so don't blame me. Not that that insinuates anything. We've only just started it, mate. <laughs> I've already started munching down chocolate outside, you know. Uh, but the fleet footwork, the movement speed, the additional movement speed from that helping Photon get away to safety. Yep. I will say my instincts Ooh. make me worried for a Twisted Fate in this matchup. Um, oh, really nice trading from Doss and Exekick. Really? It was Zviro that we had on the desk last week. Uh, and he talked enthusiastically about how when Hilly was playing this champion, you have to go all in. It's yeah. a very aggressive champion, right? It's very much about fighting. You run the Hail of Blades, you run Ignite. It's all about trying to go for fights and skirmishes in the early game. And they're gonna look to do just that. Like here, right? Hookshot, Walkshot doesn't connect though. Ignite down, flash from DOS. He just lost both of his summoners. I mean, they tried to find something and Kazi didn't walk into it. It's a big win for Vitalities 2v2. Oh, it's a kick with the level two, though. Going to get a really nice trade. Health pop being popped there by Kazi, but Vitality suffering in the early two versus two. Very much what we expect given the matchup. This is Kazi's third AD carry across three games. I think same for Hilly as well. I don't think he played oh. Rakan in game one. But now look at how they utilize this early pressure. DOS level oh two, he can fight Daglas. I mean, feeling confident, jumps on in. But remember, he has no summoners. He's going to get knocked up. Permafrost going to be there oh. and he's dead. First blood over to Vitality. Venice, that's why I said it's huge for the 2v2. Because DOS had nothing to use. You're quite right. What a blunder from SK. It might not be done. Wait, they don't Twisted think... advance out of the shock blast, but it doesn't matter either. SK that with a trade is. onto Hilly with a low health bar. Extra kick flashes, but Hilly's out. Doesn't burn his own. And now for the permafrost, for the double, it's there. But it's a trade off. Second skin is the word I was looking for that Kazi eventually gets a trade with. All I see in the game is both AD carries writing XDD in the old chat. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. What? A state of affairs. Daglas gets level three. Now, the E for DOS. First of all, he needs to connect it in the wall and then get over, but he's hesitant because he knows that the fully stacked passive from Daglas is coming through and he doesn't want it to get interrupted, so he ends up never getting to use it. Then they engage onto Daglas, but remember, Kazi only level two, doesn't have that much damage. We again. come back to live. We're just going again. Hookshot, walk shot to get out. Niski was the target, then Daglas turns, but three members of SK are here as he engaged from Hilly. Sets on up for the dunk down from the Jace. DOS again might be taken down, and he is. Second death for this Camille support, and it's not the same as when Hilly played it. Doss is so far behind. Doss is floundering on this Camille. It all comes back to that level one. You highlighted it. He missed the hook shot. He's forced to flash. The ignite disappears. That means that when they set up for that early invade, he doesn't have any of these tools to try and fight for early kills. They roam towards mid. The response from Hilly is fantastic. He's there in the right place, right time and everything is going up for Vitality. A 1k gold lead already. You look at the bottom of your screen, a 500 gold lead for Daglas. The lead in top lane already just passively being built up, partly because, you know, Twisted Fate, but also because of that range yep. advantage. And in the bot lane, we see Exekick with those two early kills, giving him a slight lead, but overall, things are looking up for Vitality. The wave's slowly pushing in, so SK don't have to be fearful for too long, but DOS is still level two. X-Kick even at four here. As they notice DOS move away, Vitality looking at the 2v2, but I want to point out, it's a sink or swim champion, folks. We've seen it succeed in the LEC, but if the Camille falls flat as a support, you have no resources, you're slow to getting that first item, which has been something like the Eclipse, and again, you're not going to do too much. Good trading here as DOS jumps in and finally gets to level three. As the wave pushes in, we'll finally be able to get some more experience. And look, x -Kick's still suffering from success naturally of the 2v2, but maybe it could have been worse. The dragon being started by Vitality. They know that they have control thanks to the push they were able to gain in the bot lane. Kazi 
primarily going to be playing on the weak side in this game. Pretty much as he has throughout this series, a lot of the attention has been given to Photon in the early laning phase. Um, but I say that, Dagus already spent a decent amount of time hovering around this bot side of the map. He is going for that very, what, hyperscaling build that only really spikes at around two, three items. Three items is where I would say it really comes online. Uh, but originally I was going to say that I was a little worried about Photon in this matchup just because I think it's so, in my head, it's so easy for the Rek'Sai to get on top of you. But if you're quick with the gold cards, you can always interrupt the tunnels, I guess, which makes that, in, that initiation that bit harder. Right now, he does have that stacked wave pushing in his favor. Makes it easy for SK to start up the grubs. He's going to start proxying away, and there's not a huge amount that Photon can really do about it. Just gold card, get rid of the tunnel. Because, yeah, Photon up about 10, 12 CS. I mean, it's been really nice to see the early game for Vitality working out in their favor. The only thing is, SK now picked up three grubs. And remember that the bottom lane still got two kills. So even despite DOS falling a little bit flat, as we said, still at level three, by the way. Exekick is the one to rely on. He's got two kills, he's got Berserker Greaves, and has a gold lead over Kazi. And it's kind of been like the, the theme of the series so far. I feel like Exekick has been set up to carry, but hasn't been able to have the same team fatic impact Team fight impact, both of us videos, that we've seen from someone like Kazi so far in the series that I think has been popping off well. I mean, game two, of course, on the Zaya. And is also set up with a kill of his own on this uh, on this Zaya to do the same thing. Kaisa. It'll be a long day, but he will get there eventually. <laughs> we still got another series after this, my friend. Yeah. I don't know if it'll be as bloodthirsty as this. Like, this has been it's a fanatic game. Okay, <laughs> maybe we're here enough. <laughs> Giant X. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually. You know yeah, what? I'm. Uh... I'm excited for that one, especially just because Giant X come off the back of a 3-0 weekend last week. Yep. And Fnatic, of course, of uh, overall Fnatic. first place yep. after that kerfuffle of a final <laughs> week. It doesn't matter, first place. Uh, first place. <laughs> I did love the tweets that we got to see after all that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that will be coming later, right now. Still got to get through this final game. Winner will, of course, remain in the upper bracket. Loser will be moving into our lower bracket to still have a chance to fight for survival in our spring playoffs. All in, Empress Divide misses. Doesn't find it, but the root's there from Isma. Batters away Video, who now looks for Daglas as backup. Unfortunate from Niski, who's played this as he is three games in a row. Not hitting that ulti. Big cooldown to be down for the next minute. Oh, Haley, Nicely done there. Hits him with a Q. Also auto attacks the control ward and W's away to safety. Three things at once. Yeah, do that. We got a 2v2 again. Definitely oh. going to be used. Numbers advantage going to be gained here by Vitality. And SK walking to this after they just burned the Azir ulti. It's a rookie error. Dakla's still going to die as Dos flies on in. But a double order over to Video. And once again, Vitality are going to be happy to have a fed chase. Give him a triple and 4 0 start for Video. He was great on the Oriana, but you better buckle up for his chase. Wow. So Vito has not been getting kills in the early game all series long, but this time around they reward him with four. It's karma. Vitality with a great start to this game. Doss was in the right place at the right time, making his way mid to help fight this three versus three. But the problem is it's... <laughs> The amount of utility that Daglas provides, along with the gold card as well. A great ultimate comes through from Daglas onto the Azir to make sure that Niski cannot do anything. And then it's just a nice secure. The hammer comes down from Vito and a big smile uh, on his face as uh, Vitality break open with a kill, a kill lead, 6-3, to 2k the gold lead. And just great use of the destiny. Get out of the lane. Yep. Leverage that impact, the advantage that you have in the 1v1. And uh, Photon, we've already talked about how overall throughout this series, he's been a great carry for his team. Looking to do the same thing again here. Top side of the map, Vitality looking strong. Dragon, 40 seconds. You imagine this will be the next objective as both supports run into each other once again. But they've got Daglas by the side. I mean, Vitality fine with this onto DOS. Remember, it's a level four Camille. What is he doing here? Isolated. A big mistake. and. I mean, Healy's moving with his jungler. Doss is just moving. That is his fourth death of the game. This Camille is not having the impact that SK wanted. And now the pressure is really starting to mount. Healy with the ult. The flash in, the all in. Isma's oh. coming in, but second fiddle. The ulti finally comes through and hits, but as Healy tries to avoid a wave, eventually the kill goes over. It becomes a trade, but 
Video still looking for this turret plate. He'll find it too. And the main thing is that this mid laner gets another kill. I think that's still great for Vitality. I mean, well played by Hilly. He doesn't get any summoners out of Niski, but that's because he didn't get a chance to move. Doss now. That ward is not allowed! It is not! You know that the Sejuani's nearby! Doss! What's going on? That is his fifth death. 11 minutes in. Continues to get caught out. And now this is going to give Vitality another dragon. Kazi's going to freely farm up in the bot lane. Exa kick. Does have a decent XP advantage, but nothing to write home about as oh now Vitality that contesting the crab. Photon has the destiny available. Well, Dragon's being done. Irrelevant at least has, seems to be the reset on top wave. Moving in first, Hilly just poking his nose in, seeing what he can gather. I mean, Doss standing there. Are they cheering for the sixth death of this Camille? We'll see. He's got level six, but remember, he just used the quickness Destiny. not up and available. Destiny, as you mentioned, this could be the fight that secures them onto the next round for Vitality. Another sting into SK's side. The mega blast comb for Photon will not be taken. And a gold card at his side holds on. The Grub's still sitting there as they want to steal for one. They won't, though. Five at the very least for SK. The shock blast on the X-Kick. Well, that's deja vu again, isn't it? As all six Grubs go over, but will it save you in the long run with how big Vitality are? I guess something is something, isn't it? I mean, the biggest advantage Vitality is gaining is the damage on the mid lane tower. If we can pan over to that, Observers, you'll notice that Kazi's just racking up more plates. I think two actually went over to him in exchange for the Grubs that were lost, which means that Vitality's still getting good pressure down. Kazi's even going to overstay in this mid lane to make sure that he can get catch another wave. VTO TP's down to bot. Photon makes his way back top. Nice lane assignments here for Vitality. Just making sure that everyone can maximize that gold. 2.4k the gold lead in mid. 1.1k the gold lead in top. Six scrubs definitely helps when it comes to sieging. That's for sure. But throughout the series, Vitality have been the masters of securing those early towers and then looking to do the same thing again this game. You like the early games throughout, right? You know, for game one, we still saw good early game from Vitality. Game two, and it kept falling through. And for SK, a couple of wins uh, holding their base, but still able to see it through to the end. My point being that for Vitality, the aggression that we've seen all spring split, the fact that they got in top two from that as well, is following through in playoffs. Hilly moving up, sinking with jungle. That's something we talked about today being core. I mean, Hilly is a leader of this team sat down, had a chat with Pat, and talked about how important he is to the environment of Vitality. I think we are seeing that throughout. Five out of nine kill participation, yes, but big important kills that have been transited over to Vino. Oh. He flashes away, dodges from DOS. That's an ulti, though, from Isma as well. 20 seconds till the Herald spawns, and you have no Maokai ulti. You're also losing bot plating with three members hovering down here, but yeah, That's four members committed mid, actually. Yeah. Photon also continues to bully Irrelevant. My perception of this matchup was clearly way off. Photon's playing it to perfection, not really giving Irrelevant any opportunity to fight back. All the Vitality hovering around the bot side of the map, and SK committed a lot to try and get that kill onto VTO. A nice, juicy 600 gold shutdown would have been lovely to grab, yep. but great reflexes from VTO gets him away to safety. He now has a two-level lead, or about a level and a half, I should say, over Niski. Vitality, 5k gold up, 14 minutes. And that's just from the top side of the map. 2.4 for mid, 900, 1k for jungle now and 1.3 for top lane. Herald will be secured, so maybe SK can get something back using this. Objective bounty is something back at the very least, right? Like, so that's a start. But here again, you're looking at Exa Kick. Maybe Niski, if he's able to trail up towards that three item Azir. He is a bit behind, as we've seen. Going up against a five and zero Jace is a hard pill to swallow. I think a harder one to swallow is a You went hubris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw. <laughs> yeah. It's very relevant, right? Yeah. <laughs> so hubris to go hubris. You went, uh... Measures earlier on as well. I mean, you have to give it credit. Of course. He's had nothing but confidence today so far in his first two games where he was not getting, he was just dying in the early game. Yeah. But uh, still finding impact, and that's the most crucial thing. Now, <laughs> Hilly looking for impact of his own. Quickness and flash available. There's the Glacial Prison used under Irrelevant. He's a tank, but sniped out is Doth again. How much is he worth as a full dive from the Killer Instinct from Kaz? He sets up to kill Irrelevant, but he's tanky enough. Herald on the bot side is what we're looking at because they're doing spins, loop de loops, trying to get some gold back into SK's pockets. And they eventually will with Niski, but Vitality still break open top get first turret of the game, get themselves another kill. 
And SK are still trading off the back end, but they are trading second. Tau will be lost in the bot side of the map. Tau top, of course, exchanged in favor of Vitality. Yes, I mean, where are you going? Oh, he went to interrupt Niski's base. And he's altered. Niski's altered 30 seconds before Dragon. Yeah, that, that Dragon is now Vitality's. So nice play yeah, really. from Photon. Niski might still TP in, but I think Photon, yeah, he's making the smart play. Just stick towards this bot tower. They'll spot Niski going back to base. They've confirmed it. Should be unlocked. Hilly with some nice cover, providing some vision for Photon. Makes this a very safe play. Even though the rest of his team isn't really putting pressure anywhere else on the map, uh, Hilly's presence and information just ultimately creates the space needed for uh, Photon to secure that objective. Now the fight over mid-wave begins. And again, the battle over vision. You see both supports fighting over Ooh. these wards. Kazi hurts with his Ws on X-Kick as well. The poke, as you said in draft, for Vitality is more than just online. It's elevated. Maybe more than SK thought it would be. And you see... If X-Kick gets hit, if Niski gets hit, it's going to be dangerous from SK. And even walking away from the poke at the top of your screen, X-Kick has to be mindful as now Full River is given a vitality. They've contested as well with slow pushing waves on the side. And the poke again, TP going to be burned. And they're like, no, we're giving it up for jumping on a Niski. <laughs> now Isma trying to defend, but Niski just teleported out. Vitality playing the slow game with Hiller saying, poking, diving, ducking, and... Vitality looking for a little bit more. Oh, oh no. no. Glacial Prison, I've seen this before. DOS is 1, 7, and 2. And while Hilly made the Camille look extra broken, DOS is looking broken inside. We turn our attention to mid. Vitality is setting up the siege. Do it again. Irrelevant on tanky enough to deal with someone like Video and Kazi. Even X kick over the wall. Killer Instinct not available just yet. So there's no chase, but more kills go down. So I'll start by giving context on the TP. That may have looked questionable, but basically SK had decided that they were giving up the objective. And so Niski wanted to try and get ahead of the play. Kazi forced to flash. flash. Hexec ultimatum. Doss setting up nicely this time. Under turret, though, it's a bit deep. Running forward, it's a good shutdown for X-Kick, though, as Douglas could be next. A kill onto the Zeri for SK is... They get something back. They're yeah. definitely much needed. Niski Wait, now Niski's on the retreat. Dead. Vito, can you connect? Oh. oh, forces the flash. He was dead. But again, basically, Niski wanted a TP in Fog of War, but he right. got spotted by the W from Kazi, which means that they then have an opportunity to collapse thanks to his ultimate, right? But Vitality really played that objective setup really well. Very patient play. They don't even go for the Dragon off the back end. They're actually more interested in finding picks and trying to secure this mid tower. I think Photon should be able to secure it SK cross-mapping top unlocks that tower for them. The dragon is still available, and Daglas being on the top side of the map is a bit awkward right now, but the lane assignments overall indicate that SK aren't particularly interested in trying to contest it right now either. They recognize that they're in a point of weakness. They need more items to be completed. This Jace is just way too strong. He's at 357 stacks, which means that that's going to be finished very soon. All it takes is one more Q, doesn't it? And then, yeah, it'll be two and a half items because... Third Lethality coming on board for video. Now, we've talked up this Jace a lot this game. Let's not forget as well that Photon is 3,000 gold ahead because of TF passive and because he's been picking up the plate. I mean, he also has 193 CS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he is ahead of the curve. So, Photon as well, his ability to just auto down people like Exekick, Niski. I mean, get into the back line. Like we talked about, not only the range, but there's huge dive and gap close from but, Vitality's comp as well. So, the. If you can play these type of comps well, they're really difficult to manage, the right. Vitality one. Because you look at SK's comp and you think, well, it's pretty straightforward, right? You just group, you press R and you go. Um, but when Niski's catching a side lane right now, the thing you have to be careful of, and I think what DOS is doing is smart, just covering him, is if Jace shows up and then TF ulties behind. It's so easy to find picks on side and, and also you've got to remember Kazi can just double you out of and nowhere then comes, and yeah. then he comes in as well. A Rakan has so much mobility. Like, like this, right? Exactly what we're seeing on our screens. And TP's trying to match it but gold card comes through. There's already a bit of damage to start off from Vitality. Remember the auto attacks I said from Photon. He's just whittling down DOS gold card and video takes the kill now for the quickness. The dive in still gets the charm. The all in the defensive position from SK trying to get under the sun turret won't be enough either. 
vitality know how to go, 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 and they ain't stopping for SK in this series. I'm so grateful that Vitality get to demonstrate exactly how their comp works. On you time. try to push in a side lane, and it's so easy for them to collapse. It helps that they also have that control in mid. They rotate up towards top. Hilly now trying to keep Isma away. No Baron steals today. Well, X Kick's gonna at least try, maybe for the fight as Isma gets down and dirty, but the ulti from X Kick doesn't connect. There's the W stack as well. Kazi wants to dive on him, but ulti from Douglas, maybe the wrong direction as Doss gets out of there slyly. But still, it's Baron over. No 50-50 this game, Vettius, as we look at the setup top. You look at the minimap as well. Two members moving up through the river here for the collapse, and there's nothing that the Maokai and Zeri can do. Great target selection from Photon there, starting with Doss, the weakest member, to make this a four versus two. Kazi's ultimate comes through. Hilly is tanking the Azir turret, and it's just a cleanup fight. Was that a triple kill? It was. It was. Secured for Vito, his second of the game, 9-0-2. But really, I know it's Vito getting a lot of kills, he's having a great game, but the way in which Hilly and Daglas are moving around the map, the collapses that we've been seeing from Photon, this has been a really great team effort and a good utilization of their globals on this comp to pick SK apart and, quite frankly, destroy them from start to finish. I mean, it, it has been as well a much cleaner game, right? Like, game one and game two, there were good early games, but there's a lot more back and forth. You know, for SK to, to bring this game back from what is a bit of a deathbed, a game that is probably going to move them into the lower bracket at this point, seems so much more difficult. The dragon stacking was there early. Video is here right now. The jump on in, trying to kill Video, but he flashes away in the shock bar from downtown. It's an insult. Nitsky can't get anything done in this game, and I feel like the last straw was like six straws ago. <laughs> the locket coming uh -oh. in clutch from Hilly. Help there is, me. can he get the blast plan? Yes. He can, he gets away to safety. Photon's not gonna flash away to that one. Hilly working so much with his entire team to constantly find picks on the map. Infernal Soul, by the way. No, sorry, Chemtech Soul coming up in a minute 45. Do you think that uh, these Vitality members are ever going to get low enough to take advantage of it? <laughs> Probably not. Photon level 15 right now is just an absolute menace on a side lane, and this is the disadvantage of these team fight comps. Yeah. It's so difficult to win these like skirmishes, these 1v1s, 2v2s, Old and team. Vitality just playing Ooh. the map. Got the AD carry, cleanse comes out, the Ents go marching again, down one by one, they find themselves a cheeky hilly in the front line, but the damage ain't there as DOS is not willing to commit either. Gold Two cards from Photon. We can see two members from SK trying to push. They're trying to put some pressure down onto VTO. He's going to hold them off. They'll lose that tower, but that's fine. Uh, they might lose the game, Vettius, because VTO exactly. can 1v2. There's no TP available uh, for Irrelevant. SK, are you ready to go to the lower bracket? VTO's got to stop the back. flashes on in. I think the answer might be yes. Vitality again going forward as a big shutdown goes to Doss to try and buy the game. Isma also finds Hilly, but Kazi's still here. The Zaya that could. Excuse me, it's a Kaito. VTO now in a 2v1 brain today, but maybe there's some there for SK. Video against the wall, Bob's back onto Irrelevant. The kill's not oh. there at the shutdown. They're still trying in the bot lane, by the way. Vitality are not giving up so easily. I mean, Kazi's just throwing the poke out as much as he can. But SK, I mean, they get thrown a lifeline. Vitality go for a very greedy... Oh. Wait, Niski He's... will die. Wait, no, he oh, doesn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wrong. I see. Whew, close on there for Niski. I mean, there's still 9k gold behind. Let's be real. The game state is still atrocious for SK. But with Exit Kick on Zeri again, <laughs> as Flash comes through from Niski. If Niski can flash ult or at least save it at one point, because as you said, Chemtech Soul, Chemtech Soul kind of useless, maybe. No one likes him. Uh, <laughs> told by that person at the party that no one really likes. You know? oh my God, how does he know? <laughs> someone check his PC. No, someone checked. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a soul secured for Vitality. Just really impressive stuff. I was concerned for Vitality after the first game. I was like, have SK found their form? Have they figured out a solution to some of the problems that they were running into? And... Uh, what is this vitality that we're seeing? But in game two and game three, we have seen some pop-off performances. Boom. I've been super impressed with Photon and Kazi in particular. Yeah. But Hilly as well, just the way that he's constantly everywhere on the map has been so, so valuable. It's going to be difficult selecting player of the series, that's for sure. Assuming that they can win.
Yeah. Because the beauty of this series has been that both teams have found ways to throw at Baron. Yeah. So 50-50, uh, <laughs> we haven't had one before. But in a minute 20, we might have another one again in this series. Now, again, Nature's Grasp is coming through. Hillisang quickly dodges as Photon ghosts out of the way. That's a big team fighting ult, but for Vitality, remember, they can reposition. They can reposition. They can dive as DOS took so much damage from the W, and Irrelevant is getting poked down. <laughs> Auto down. Photon just won't stop. Irrelevant re engages and dies. Kazi just presses W, and down he goes. I mean, it's so annoying to play against this comp that is. It really is. Photon is able to find that pick. Kazi finishing up the kill. They're going to break another tower. An inhibitor is sure to follow. Will they go for the Nexus? They know they have the numbers advantage here. They're catching the bot wave to help escort another wave in. Look at this. Look at the poke. Kazi as well. He's got that upgraded W, so it comes every two seconds. Niski at half HP. The poke follows through from video as well. Another one hits. Another one. Call DJ Khaled. I think he's seen another one. Kazi gets Dizma and Vitality get the Nexus target. The next kick. Finally, Oldies, but Hilly re engages. Quickness not there. Dos faded in. Poke down. <laughs> Almost one shot. Niski gets the ulti of the Photon. That keeps the defense going. It's Daklitz as well. He's trying to bite his time, but X-Kick keeps the game going. Gets video, which keeps the ult going. He jumps forward. The engage is there. Triple for X-Kick. SK are not dead yet. SK are able to hold the line. They punish Vitality's over-aggression. While they open up the Nexus for a potential backdoor, which against the TF, oh. you have to be very careful about. They overstay their welcome, and Exa Kick gets to pop off. Niski's forced back from the poke. Isma gets chased down. He gets one shot thanks to the passive that Kazi's able to apply. You think at this point the game is over, but look at Exa Kick here. Clears out the minions. Flash. Hilly tries to find an engage, but Exa Kick flashes away. And then a nice ulti here from Niski. Locks up Photon, and now with one damage to the dead, Douglas is overextended. They turn their attention over to him. Bro. And then Vitality is just forced to retreat. Look at this as well. He ease over. He does the Jackie love, but the difference is the whole team's not there waiting for him. A triple kill picked up. Now, I don't know if you want to believe in miracles as Vitality are going to pick up the Baron, deny the objective bounty. And remember, there are no Nexus turrets. You're playing against a Twisted Fate. It is difficult. There's the hope in. I'm breathing in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm breathing. There it is for SK to stay in the upper bracket and have a much easier run. Because remember, after this, you're one BO3 or you're one series away from getting into the upper final. Like, it, it is just such a nice progression in the spring playoffs. And when MSI is on the line, the representation of your region, for one of these teams, it would make life so much easier for them sitting in this top side. But the problem is, even though x got all those kills, I guess Video's damage doesn't really fall off anywhere because running into the Zeri, that's half his health gone. Into base he goes, Betty. The poke from Vitality is ruthless. And they're dodged. Attacking this final. Grass. Oh, they're in. Right. Irrelevant. Finds himself a knockup on a Kazi. Killer is the Hughes. Okay. There we go. Wait, where's he going? Back door. Oh, God, back door. Running onto the Nexus. Niski trying to stop it. Jump him in, but he fucks it away. Photon's got it. He's got it. What a way to end the series. To move on in the upper bracket. Vitality. Knock down SK. Just like Winter. Photon leaves no room for error. Niski is aware of the potential backdoor, but he shuts it down. Very well played from Photon, very well played from Vitality. A complete stomp here in game three from start to finish. Doss's Camille was heavily punished. Oh yeah. And uh, Vitality rode off that momentum. Bro, what a series overall, hey. Ladies and gentlemen, you vote for your key player of the series at LEC on X. Is it Photon, Kazi, or Hilly? Tough choice. That is very hard. That's a tough one. But man, I tell you what, on that ending, you got to believe that Photon continues to deliver. This is why I said, Vettius, top three of my top laners, both Winter and now. Photon last year as well, people are saying the same thing, like, man, this guy's underrated. Why aren't we talking about him more? I hope we're giving him the attention now, because Vitality, what a cornerstone to help get them in to that upper bracket or at least keep them there. Team Heretics BDS will be who they're waiting for the winner.
ladies and gentlemen. We're actually going to have an interview with Kazi and Healy after this break, so make sure you join us then. Red Bull gives you wings.